From Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I... I'm your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. It's 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. If baby wants a steak, baby got to wait because I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Yeah. Buy ya. Lick it, don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Want to get laid? Gotta be an oh. asshole. Spike, use prophylactics with Tabasco. Hit it, quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Pooh. Got it knocked up, but you're looking to switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. My kiss 101. My kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. My kiss 101. Oh, yeah, it's Ficus 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Ficus 101. And may I tell you that uh, during this holiday season, I know many of you are confused. Many of you are wondering, you know, just how to handle things uh, this time of the year. And my general recommendation to you is to try to keep your contact with chicks you bang at a minimum, preferably zero at this time of year. And I mean zero. I mean it. Zero. Do not talk to them. Do not call them. Do not visit them. Do not have sex with them. Stay away. Stay away. That is my recommendation to you. Don't go near them. Please. (laughs) I just can't tell you how important it is that you stay away. They want gifts. They want attention. They want commitment. If you're with them on New Year's Eve, they think it means something. All you're doing is banging them. Don't let them treat you like you're at a timeshare presentation and sell you on the idea that this is love. It's poon. It's just poon. It is no more and no less. It is poon. And you should not be doing anything more than simply hitting it and ultimately quitting it. I can't make this any simpler simpler than it is. That's what it is. Hitting it, quitting it, pumping it, and dumping it, banging it, and clanging it. That's it. Other than that, out. No expensive gifts. No visiting her family. Oh, my God, her family, her friends. No sitting under her Christmas tree. I don't even want you to know if she has a Christmas tree. And I don't want her knowing if you have one. You don't want her meeting your family. You don't want her meeting your friends. You don't want her coming to your company Christmas party. You don't want to have her out for a drink at Christmas time. This is the time to meet some strange. We told you about the human grab bag. We told everybody, break up with your girl now and toss your girl into the human grab bag for Christmas. Put her in the human grab bag. Then hook up with her later after Valentine's Day is over and you are safely beyond this very dangerous time of the year. Let me tell you about your professor. Your professor is getting all kinds of emails, text messages, and phone calls from women who have drifted away over the past few months are now drifting back in, hoping to latch on in their time of need. Are you kidding me? This is the last time I'm latching on with anybody. 
But that doesn't stop them from trying. Oh, my God, they try. Forget it. Not happening. I'm sure this is happening to some of you, too. Forget it. Do not, do not have anything to do with her this holiday season. Now, if for some reason you're living with her, you did something stupid like that, or maybe you did something even stupid like had a baby with her, keep the costs to a minimum. Trying to keep things as simple as possible. Don't be wasting money on Christmas. Your money should be going to paying the bills. Don't go into debt for Christmas. Don't be wasting your money. Don't be paying interest on your credit card for Christmas. Forget it. Don't do it. I can't make this any simpler. I can't make it any clearer. As your Like is one one professor, I am telling you, you need to try to keep the Christmas holiday as small and contained as you possibly can. And as we head towards Christmas Eve, and I'm telling you, Christmas Eve is coming up Monday night. Monday night is Christmas Eve. Boys, everyone says that's the night not to go out. Every woman who got dumped is going to be in a bar drowning her sorrows on Christmas Eve. When you see a woman at a bar Monday night, by the way, many bars in Southern California close early. So you really want to get to your local bar if you can. It's going to sound a little early, but like 6, 6.30, 7 o'clock. Get in there early. And um, whatever bar you're at, if you see a chick sitting by herself, trust me, she is there for the pick. And that's low-hanging fruit, boys. She's there because she got dumped by somebody else. Here's your opportunity to sop her up like a biscuit sops up gravy, for God's sake. You take her, you do her, then you dump her again. Reducing your self-esteem even further and making her even more available to the guys out there. Remember, what you want to do with women is make them do things they're going to regret the rest of their lives. If she has to do the walk of shame the next day, you're getting the picture. You want her waking up not knowing where her panties are. Ever get up the next morning and find her panties balled up in your sheet somewhere? That's what you want. You want her walking around with no panties on the next day. You want her saying to yourself, I said to myself I was never going to do that. I was not going to let some guy just have me. I just got to meet some guy in a bar. Just do him. You want her to feel miserable about herself and what she did. That's what you got to do. This is your professor speaking, and I want you to know that there's lots of sex to be had, but it's not the places you expect. I could be at your mom's house or any other relatives who are having dinner. It's not, you're not going to be picking anybody up there, okay? It's not the company Christmas party. At the company Christmas party, they're just monitoring your behavior, and they're going to prosecute everybody. You know, when I say prosecute, I mean they're going to uh, take care of you corporately with discipline for everything you do wrong, everybody you put your hands on, so don't be dipping in your pen in the company ink or fishing off the company pier. The time to get what you've got coming to you is to go out. If you don't have a family expecting you over on Christmas Eve, go out and get what's out there. Boys, it's out there. I'm telling you, there will be women out on Christmas Eve you know, Christmas Eve, Monday night, Hollywood, Hollywood. God, you know, I live in the Hollywood Hills and Hollywood on Christmas Eve. I've done it, boys. I've been there. And I'm telling you, women drowning their sorrows in apple martinis. They are all over the Hollywood area. There are other areas, too, I'm sure are really good. How about Westwood? There are going to be girls at college bars in Westwood. Their friends all went home for the holiday. Their boyfriends are uh, 50 miles, 100 miles, 200 miles, 1,000 miles away. They're going to be sitting there putting money in the jukebox, feeling sorry for themselves. Uh, we will get the reports in future class uh, sessions here. We'll be getting reports from the guys who went out to bars and found what I'm telling you to go out and get. So I wanted to give you this Christmas reminder during this holiday season of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Goodwill toward men, yes, but uh, you know what? 
pound those bitches, baby. You know, that, that's a merry Christmas when you go out there. A couple of, you know, a couple of big brass ornaments out there and go get the job done. And by the way, don't stay there for Christmas morning. Do her, get out. There'll be a million of roadblocks and everything, so I recommend if you're boozing, you know, don't cheap out. Get yourself a cab. It's a lot cheaper than a DUI. Not only that, uh, this chick who's about to do something she'll regret for the rest of her life, she'll actually get the idea that you're, like, protecting her or something like that, when in reality you're just uh, jerking her chain until you get what you want. Lower her self-esteem, make her feel even worse about herself, and she'll do whatever you want. Because she will think if only she'd done whatever the last guy wanted, she'd still be there today. This is your opportunity to score. Take it. Take it. Classes in session, boys. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The only reason why I listen is to see how men think, too. Right. You guys are so dumb. You you air, broadcast how you think over the air like oh. dumb idiots. I'll okay? see that. So now I know your little game. Really? I can go and play it. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. Like us 101. Here we are, you and me. I am your professor, Charlie, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay, Charlie. So, check it out. I got a few uh, lady friends with benefits. And, you know, so I know that they're all getting me presents, and I kind of feel obligated to get them presents, you know? Why are you even seeing them so they can give you presents? Why aren't you keeping it on the down low right now? Uh, I made the mistake of saying I wasn't going home. So. Why'd you do right. that? Because uh, it, it was a silly moment of honesty. <laughs> I, I warned you. I said, keep a low profile now. You were right. So uh, what do you think, man? Now, these are booty calls? Mm, friends with benefits. When you say friends with benefits, you mean you actually have conversations with these women? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, they, they're they all telling you they've gotten you something, so they want something in return. Exactly. That's why they're telling you. How many yeah. did you tell this to? Well, like four. You told four different women. So you didn't just have a slip of the tongue. This was a game plan to tell them that you were going to be around. Mm, not really. How did you make the same mistake four times? Uh, good question. <laughs> Didn't you realize after the mistake the first time, maybe you made a mistake? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what, what can I do? Well, I, I'm just trying to understand how you kept making the same mistake over and over. There we go. <laughs> Can I say? 1-800-5800-TOM. I am your professor. It's Lycus 101. This is Audrey in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Lycus show. Hello. With the radio turned up and everything. Hello. Is that a question or a statement, darling? Well, I want to know why you trash woman so much. Well, I, d I don't hear myself trashing uh, anybody. I mean, what are you talking about? Well, I, I, I've been hearing your show for a couple of weeks now, and the only thing I heard is you being angry towards women. And I just want to know... Well, well give me some like specific that? examples that, that would show that I am angry towards women. I don't hear it. You don't You don't hear it? No. Give me uh, some examples, please. Well, you, you pretty much... Uh, well, what we just heard, it was about, I don't know, having sex with a woman and, like, lowering her steam down. Lowering her self-esteem so she'll do whatever you want her to do, of course. Oh crap. No, it, it works, dear. It's not. Darling, it actually does work. Now, it might not work on you, but it does work. Have you ever been in love, Tom? Oh, I have. In fact, I think every man listening has been in love at some point or another. And why are you so angry towards women? I'm not angry towards women. I'm realistic about what you could expect to get from a woman. So for you, you only get from women sex, and that's it. 
Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, oh my God. You don't that's think women, you don't think women are good for sex? All right, maybe speak for yourself. Maybe you're not good for sex, but I know many women who are. Oh, that is not nice at all. Well, it's true, dear. I mean, the truth it's hurts sometimes. What? So, what? all right, I, mean, I I I concede it's possible you're not even good for sex. But trust me when I tell you, I know women who are. But that, but it is not all women in in your show. I didn't you say all women. I did. You use that term. I didn't. My God! Every single time that you talk about in your show is about women and the wrong the women are doing, and and I had never heard you say anything bad about guys. Darling, I've told all kinds of truth about guy. By the way, I don't try to say bad things about anyone. I'm just telling the truth, okay? That's not a truth. <laughs> yes, darling, it's the truth, okay? Uh, I mean, I guys will have sex with anything that moves. Uh, when a guy breaks up with a wife or a girlfriend, he will have sex with fat chicks, old chicks, shriveled up chicks, hideous chicks. They will go over to women's houses at midnight or two in the morning and have sex with them, hoping their friends won't see them. Uh, believe me, guys do what they do, and women do what they do. I'm just oh. telling the truth. This has nothing to do with loving or hating people. No, no, no. I, I never say you hate him. I'm just, I, I'm just, I don't know. I just wonder why you. Well, you did actually. You that. did say, "Why do I hate women?" You said it. I just, I just want to know why you're so angry towards. I'm us. not. I'm not angry. When we are so lovable and we're so. No, cute. no, darling. And by the way, I don't know what country you're from, but American women are not loving and lovely. Okay, they're just not. They're bitches. <laughs> oh my god. Now you haven't dated an American woman, dear, so you don't know. Well, I don't date women. Okay, what country are you from, darling? Italy. Italy is a very different place. And by the way, I've been to Italy. I was just there last summer. And I, I want to say that the women in Italy are nothing like the women I'm describing here. So I understand why you're offended. Well, women, yeah, in, women in Italy compete to attract men and they, they want to please men. We don't have women like that in this country. So you are just talking about American women. Well, dear, we live in America. Now, when I'm in Italy, it's a totally different kind of woman. I would never use these rules in Italy. It's not necessary. All right. But uh, have you uh, seen women in this country? Have you talked to them? Um, to what? To women? Yes, women in this country. Have you had a conversation with a woman about uh, relationships or about men? Uh, yeah, actually, I am married to an American. I'm talking about women, American women. Have you talked to them? Yeah, I have a lot of American women. Yeah, and what do they have to say about men and sex and relationships? What do they tell you? Uh, well, I don't talk about that with them. Well, maybe you should, because if you did, you'd find out how angry and bitchy these women are and, <laughs> and how they do not make a man feel like a man the way women do in Europe. Oh, I see. Uh, it's so, just not the same kind of women here, dear. All right. And I've, I've spent a lot of time in Europe, and I'm telling you, it's two different worlds in more ways than just money or what kind of cappuccino we drink. <laughs> All right. And, Thanks and, for explaining and, that to me. How did you go from, from, where in Italy are you from, dear? Verona. How did you go from Verona to Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat? Uh, well, actually, I moved to Aspen, Colorado, and then I met my husband, and he... We actually moved here to Portland. I see. Yeah. It's not like Italy, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, thank you so much. Now, you see, darling, now, now, now look how much less angry and upset you are. Yes. Well, thank you so much for explaining this to me. And, darling, if you Will have you... any hot chicks in Italy, I'm going again next summer. I'm going to need some names and phone numbers. All right. I'll hook you up. And believe me, I will treat them <laughs> like royalty because that's how they are. Yeah, we are. Uh, darling, I've seen it in person. Okay, Tom, will you take me out with a Kobe? Of course I will, dear. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Like is 101. Isaac on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. I just called to thank you for just, 
I haven't been more appreciative to anybody, and I can't remember how long. Um, I thought I knew more than you, dipped my pen and fished off the company pier, ended up knocking her up, getting married, feeling sympathetic about the whole ball and chain thing, and that lasted for about three and a half years of just agony. I'm finally out of it. Divorce is final, and um, I've just never been happier, and it's all thanks to you and your tools. Wow. But the first time around, you didn't listen to me. You went ahead and did your own thing. Is that the deal? Uh, that is exactly. That is exactly the deal. Wow. So you had to learn the hard way. Unfortunately. And uh, if things seem to be working out good between us. Unfortunately, we've got a daughter. So, um, Or actually, fortunate for me, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me because she's here now. Obviously, I wouldn't be saying that if she wasn't here just because... Uh, things just happen to work out. Except now but, you have now now yeah. you have to look at <laughs> oh, yeah. now, now you have to look at your ex for the oh, yeah. essentially the rest of your life. Yes, unfortunately. Yes, Un unfortunately. All right, Isaac. I'm glad you finally learned. Thank you very much, Pop. I can't thank you enough. And like I said, um, for the past six and a half months, I've been getting more tail than I can handle, um, and it's all thanks to your tools. Sounds good to me. Thank you, buddy. Take me out with a bong rip. Here you go, Isaac. <coughs> this is Trey on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what up, Tom? Not much, Trey. Hey, man. Hey, I'm going to do exactly what you said, dude. I already set this up. I had a chick. She just broke with her boyfriend about like a month ago. And it's funny because she got into my car and I had you on the sh I had you on the air and she's like, "Oh, you listen to Likers? I hate that guy." And I was like, "Oh no, I don't listen to Likers. You know, I just was flipping through the channels and you know, I just happened to have them on. But you know, I'm a goddamn diehard Likers fan." So she's so you know we hooking up on Monday and Tom, I'm about to get this chick so soft I'm gonna be boner and I'm gonna put Likers one on one on her ass and I will take a picture of it and send it to you so you can put that on your website. Tom. I love it. We'll put it right next to the girl who peed on my front door. Hey, hey Tom. Uh, hey, Tom. I'm a man of my word, Tom. I'm going to get this chick so soft, I'm going to write like it's one-on-one on her ass in permanent marker. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do it just for you, Tom. I okay, love it. I love, it. Man. I love, I love it. you, Tom. And, and I just want to tell, like, all these pussies out there with girlfriends right now, you guys are like a bunch of pussies right now out there with all these girlfriends, dude. Like, it makes me sick when I hear people talk about girlfriends just because that just shows that they just pussy. They don't have game. Tom. Right. Like, they, they don't just, have game. If they had they game, time. they wouldn't need girlfriends. Girlfriends are for guys with no game. Hey, Tom, man, like, like, what sense does it make, really, for you to have a girlfriend right now, for you to go buy them an expensive gift like you've been saying? And what are they going to get you, Tom? You know you know these girls are cheap as hell, like you always say. That's right. You know these bitches ain't going to get you nothing. That's you know right. That. So why waste your money on these hoes? That's exactly I, right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, get, I get these hoes a stocking full of ass, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, girlfriends are for guys with no game or guys who need a roommate. Hey, Tom. Hey, man. I've been listening to you for, like, the last three years, man. I've been getting so much ass. It's ridiculous. And, and like, I, I swear, I'm, a, I'm not even a Jesus freak, but I swear to God, Tom, I'm never going to get married, dude, just for the simple fact that you and my mother hates you, my sister hates you, my aunts hate you, all the chicks I know hate you, and it's just because of me. And, and to tell you the truth, I don't really don't care, and I feel much better that I can be honest with these girls. Like, girls, I mean, I feel much better. I should just be honest about it and just tell them, like, I only want to bang, you know, I don't want to come, I don't want a relationship. I feel much better about myself. You know, I used to I used to freaking feel, like, kind of bad, you know, lying to these girls and just banging them and stop talking them. I used to feel bad, but now I saw this in you, I feel good as, I feel good as hell. I'm, I got to I gotta tell you, you, I, you know, I'm so glad you brought this up, Trey, because it reminds me that I had, you know what an epiphany is? I had one. That? That one time? day I was sitting, I, you know, I go to a therapist, and one day I was sitting with my therapist, I said, you know what, I had an epiphany. And the epiphany was, one day I realized, you know what, I don't want a relationship, I don't want to be married. I, I it Not only am I a jerk and an a-hole. Man, I'm just like you. It's who I am. I'm proud of who I am. I'm, I'm not gay, but I, I can imagine what gay people go through when they come out of the closet. It's like finally I once said, you know what? I now I'm going public. It's like I'm, I am going to let everybody know what a jerk, what an a-hole, what a creep, what a son of a bitch I am. Hey, and I wear like a badge on my sleeve, dude. Like I don't even care no more, man. Right. Like, and it's just thanks to you. I really didn't care already, but just listening to you, 
Like, it just put it in, like, a, a brighter perspective. You know, like, don't feel wrong about these hoes. You know, go hard on them. So what? Like, who who cares about them? Let the next man care about them, you know? That's right, because they're, they're damaged goods by that time. What do we care? Hey, exactly, Tom. We just trying to get in there and get out. Like I said, this chick that I'm looking up on Monday, I, 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 honest to God, Tom, I'm right. Like, it's one on her ass cheeks while I'm beating. You, you know what? You're just going to be like a fireman, okay? You just want to get in with the hoes and get out of there fast. Hey, Tom, and, and the thing about it, dude, like, I'm a, I'm a black dude, and you know what I'm saying? I got, a, like, a lot of white buddies and a lot of black buddies, and, like, I got my black buddies listening to you. I turn, like, my white buddies on to you, and it's just like, I got just a million of these dudes just going around and listening to you for real, like, really not caring about these girls no more, man, like. I'm telling you, if I see you at Lola's, man, drink, drinks is on me, Tom. <laughs> I you love it. Lola's drinks is on me, baby. I love like it. Like I said, man, you just, you made me feel better about being a, being an a-hole and being a jerk and being just not really giving an F. Like you, how you say, like, you made me feel better about myself, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't like, be more man, proud man, of you. Like, you I couldn't be more, better, I couldn't be more proud of you if you were my, my own flesh and blood, for, uh, Trey. Hey, I, I feel like you are. Man. You like you like a pop to me, Tom. I ain't even gonna lie, man. I like Love I that. take your words. I take your words. I take everything you say, and I believe everything you say just because I put it in play like baseball, baby, and it works. Putting it in play like baseball. I couldn't have said it better myself. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was in the shower, and I got out of the shower, and my wife was checking my cell phone. And I swear to God, for like the last week, every day I get home, she's like, what What number was this? What number was that? Who is this? Who is that? She's like, who is, who is Kim? I feel like telling her, hey, bitch, Kim's the girl I'm banging behind your back. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's Likas 101, the Tom Likas Show with your professor, Tom Likas, at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Mary on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi. Hi. Is it fun? Yeah, oh, did you want to talk to Tom? No, don't do that, Tom. Don't do that. Why don't would you that. ask a question like that? I just said you're on the Tom Likas Show. Come I, on, how, I, how easy can I make it? You know what, Tom? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm in the bank, and uh, I didn't want everybody to hear my problem, so I was trying to rush it. I see. So, I'm sorry? I said I see. I know. Anyway, so here I am, 24 years old, and I am having sex with a 39-year-old who is also banging three additional other chicks. Really? How do you feel yeah. about that? Well, you know, I knew about them, but I didn't really care until, like, you know, I spent the weekend with him in New York. That's where he lives. And I'm in L.A., and we met on my trip in Southeast Asia. So, um, <laughs> long story short, I thought I was just going to go in this thinking it's just going to be a fling. i um, not going to have any emotions, attachment whatsoever. But as... As he wine and dine me in New York, I find myself going, crap, I want I want this guy to end this with those, those three other women. And it's nearly impossible because, you know, I want to follow this Tom Likas thing, try to, you know, milk him for everything he has or whatever. But <laughs> it's not possible because now I'm just like, okay, I'm starting to like him. <laughs> but dear, you, don't you realize what kind of person he is? <sighs> he is as as far as what what is like his personality is he's strange. a player he's a player by by the way i'm a player too but don't be falling in love with him just have fun with him and then get the hell out how do you how do you draw that line between you know having fun and then you know enjoying his company and possibly falling for him because here's the deal he's going to break your heart and uh -huh. so why don't you just have fun with him you're having fun with him, aren't you? He's not married to you or anything. Why can't you just realize he's not going to be what you wanted to be ever, 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 ever? And that is true because at this age, um, I mean, he's 39, obviously. There's not much room for growth or changes. Uh, darling, uh, no man has room for change, the kind of changes you're looking for. So forget it. And they're all 
really young, too. We're like the average of our ages, four of us, probably 25, 26. Yeah, well, and guess what? You all falling for him, probably. That's, yeah. I, I've, when I was in New York, all of a sudden, every one of them called him, and they... they how did you know? Wait, wait. How did you know every one of them was calling him? Because <laughs> I was... I knew about those other girls, but they don't know about me. So, like, supposedly he gave me this impression that I was, like, so special that he wanted to keep me secret and, like, a secret. And so they didn't know about me. Oh, I, that, that's a good one. I got to use that one. You're so special. <laughs> I want to keep you a secret. And by the way, yeah. you bought that stupid line, didn't you? I, uh, you know what, I did, and I thought it was possibly true because, you know, let's call them X, Y, Z, you know, X knows about Z, Z knows, I mean, Y, I'm sorry, X knows about Y, Y knows about Z, however, both Y and Z doesn't know, I mean, X doesn't know about Donnie, Z. forget all that. The bottom line yeah. here is he used one of the most obvious red flag lines in the book. Yeah. You know, I, by God, that that's the kind of line that a uh, a sexual predator would use. Don't you ever watch Dateline? Yes. You're, I do. you know what, you thirteen year old girl, you, you're so special. I want to keep this our secret. I mean, come on, that's like a Chris right. Hansen line. Are you kidding me? Right. Oh, I know. Why would you buy that? Because I'm such a dork. You know, when you wine and dine me, it's like. Uh, that typical L.A. girl. <laughs> How so? You know, I, I like to be pampered. Um, you know, when I was in New York, we were dining at, you know, five-star five restaurants and stuff. And, you know, we, we were just, we lived a life, you know, and he provided that all for me. And, he, you know, because he's wealthy. Um, but, I Yes, mean, but darling, isn't that a hint? He's wealthy. He's 39. He's never been married. And yeah. there's a number of 24, 25-year-old girls who are all falling in love with him at the same time. Yeah. Doesn't this tell you anything? <laughs> it does. It does. I'm just, I'm just naive. And you are best. never going to be the one, nor is anybody else. You know, I I got to tell you, and I, she'll hate that I mentioned it, but I don't care. I have an ex-girlfriend, uh -huh. um, and without giving away her identity, although anything I say about her, she always knows I'm talking about her, but nobody <laughs> but, but she knows, okay? Uh, I was with somebody who had the same thing happen to her three times in a row. Okay. She dated a very, very high-level corporate executive who was 47 years old when she was like 28. Okay. She dated a Formula One race car driver who was like 30-something and she was 29. <laughs> and there was a third guy, I can't remember. Each one of these guys used the following line on her. They said, well, you know, I've been single all these years, but if I ever were going to get married, you would be the one. You know, that's funny. He said that to me. He's like, there we you, go. If, if, you know, if, I, if I were pick, ever going to get married, you. it would be you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Okay. And by the way, that's as good a, that's as good a, 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 a filibuster. That's as good a time waster as giving a woman a promise ring. Oh. Uh, and you know what? He's coming for um, Christmas break, and he's bringing the girlfriend of the, you know. Oh, he's bringing. One of the girls. Yeah. He's bringing one of the other girls. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's going to sneak away to go hang out with me. So, so, so. By the way, now what we know here is that you're you're not even at the top of the list of women no. he bangs. I guess not. Thanks well, a lot. Pretty, I'm telling you, reality. do you want the reality check or not? <laughs> I mean, let's review. He's flying from New York to Los Angeles uh -huh. with a woman. Yeah. And and they are coming together. They're probably going to stay in a really nice hotel somewhere, right? His mom is in Huntington Beach, yes. And he probably is where in Huntington somewhere. Beach? It's, it's near. It's like near at the sunset, or not sunset. Uh, it's a hotel. Beach. What's the name of the hotel? I have no idea. But it's a nice hotel. Uh huh. Near the beach in Huntington Beach. So well, here they come. Uh, here they come from Manhattan. They're coming to Los Angeles. They're going to Huntington. They're going to land at LAX. They're going to drive down to Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And she's going to bring all her hottest little bikinis and mm-hmm. uh, every little thong she owns. And then at one point, he's going to say, honey, I." by the way, how do I know this? I've done what I'm about to tell you. Here's okay. how it works. You tell her, honey, okay. why don't you go down to the spa and get yourself a facial, treat uh. yourself, <laughs> just put it on my room. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm going to give you your space. You go ahead and enjoy yourself. And she is going to eat that up. You know what? Actually, he told me his plan was um, that he was going to have me pretend to be his brother's girlfriend to attend the party. What party? The, the, the Christmas party. Whose Christmas his, party? Wait a minute. At his parents' house. At his parents' house. Oh, wait. This gets better. So yeah. it, this gets better. Oh, wait a minute. So he's coming here for the Christmas party, and he's bringing the girlfriend. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. The, he's bringing the girl to the parents' house. So now yes. the parents are under the impression that she's, like, probably going to be the one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. I go, you can't do that if you say that. Yes, he can. I know, it's such an yes, idiot. Yes, he can, because you let him. Uh, I know. Isn't that such a... And it's all your wishful thinking that you've got this rich, good-looking guy uh, who is going to... You You think that your vagina is better than the next girl's vagina. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. That's right. Uh, Guess uh, what? Yeah, hey, more yeah. than half of Americans have a vagina. <laughs> that might be <laughs> shocking to you, but you don't have the, the monopoly on vaginas. I've seen the girl's pictures. They're not as hot as I am. It doesn't matter. Maybe she does things in the sack that you don't do, won't do, haven't done, haven't thought of. Who knows what those things are? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you're you're right. Oh, gosh, I'm so naive. Ever, uh, ever said no to anything in bed? Yeah. She says yes. <laughs> Some of the stuff he's, I said no to, I, I would think any woman would... In the right mind, would say no to the ones who say yes. They go to the parents' house for the Christmas party. Oh, the ones who say no, you. we sneak out to see them. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that plan's going to work if I pretend to be the brother's girlfriend. So the brother acts as his beard. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> you know who used to do that? Remember the comedian Phil Hartman who was on Saturday Night Live? Yes. Yeah, he used to have a beard. We we got a report on that. And he was married. Somebody uh, else would show up uh, at his home <laughs> with a woman uh, he was dating. I, I, you know, it's it's a bad idea. I, I'm not going to go through with it. I'm not. It's it's that's just stupid of me. I'm inviting trouble to my darling. Place. You're never going to be number one in that parade. Never. Wow. I, mean, I, but, but, I don't. One. Why is I've never been number well, one? Well, first of all, dear, uh, you, the reason you're never number one is because you accept being number two, three, and four, hoping to move up. You're right. You see, you're never. You, you ever meet a guy and and he's your friend, and then he wants yeah. to be more than a friend. You say, but I don't want to ruin our friendship. Mm-hmm. Okay. Once a guy treats you like number two, number three, or number four, mm-hmm. you're not. You can't move up to number one. Wow, really? Really. So I can never move this fling to something more Once you've accepted a subservient role, you cannot make it Mm -hmm. to number one. Wow. You can't. Now he knows you're a doormat. Oh. And you are. Tom, you're hurting me with these words. (laughs) I'm telling you the truth. You're willing to let him. He would fly here from New York with Uh number one. Yeah. Number one gets to go to his parents' house as the girlfriend. Yeah. You, number two, three, or four, have to accept the idea that you're the brother's girlfriend. You're not his girlfriend. And then the two of you have to sneak away where nobody will see you. I know. It's it, You know, this plays out in the movies, and I know I, I, I shout at the screen and go, what are you doing? And here I am living that life. It's yeah. you, dear. That's that's the story of your life. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, it's refreshing to hear it from somebody else's perspective. I know it's painful, darling, but you need somebody to kick your ass. I know. I have a pretty nice one for an Asian chick. Dear, why don't you show it to me instead? Stop wasting your time. You're absolutely right. I've got You're an open. So right. I've got an open palm with your name on it, dear. Please take me out with something. Well, I'm going to take you out with this, baby.
It's the Tom Likas Show.